What does an API technical writer do? And what are some of the responsibilities aspiring writers can expect on the job? In this video, we're going to break down the job description of an API technical writer. And hi there, my name is Josh and I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ and I have over 10 years of technical writing experience. And today we'll be talking specifically about API technical writers, what their job role and responsibilities look like, and we'll take a look at some examples of API technical writing. And if you're not familiar with this line of work, don't worry, that's what I'm here for. But before we dive into the topic, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with everything technical writing if you want to better your career. And that way, you'll always get great content that helps you, whether that's to increase your salary, increase your skill set in technical writing, or better work with stakeholders and in many different aspects. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. So what exactly is an API technical writer? An API technical writer creates documentation that explains how an application programming interface or API works. They provide use case examples to describe the most effective ways to use the interface and provide in-depth descriptions of the API's functions and how it interacts with the application. In a case that API is complex or needs better understanding on the user's part, writers will build tutorials for users on how to implement the API. And last year's API writers will make arguments in favor of how the API is used and its interactions with the host system. And unlike most industrial technical documents, API documents are a hybrid of visuals such as screenshots and written material. With that in mind, API technical writers have to create a well-defined starting point for developers to get acquainted with the new API. This gives them a solid direction to start planning, designing, and building the feature. Writers also have to structure the document to facilitate the most common use cases for the API. For example, if the API performs a set of actions that end users commonly implement, then that will prominently show in the documentation. One important aspect of the technical writer's job is to ensure that documents are written not just for high-level developers and engineers, but also for people with less technical understanding. They'll write in a balanced tone while ensuring there's value for users throughout the document. The documents themselves need to contain examples, code samples, authentication, and other resources to be valuable to readers. To do this, writers have to write comprehensively and support their arguments at every step. Use cases serve as a prime example based arguments in favor of the API, and writers have to know the most common uses, which ones are important enough to be featured, and which ones developers value the most. In order to do this, writers will research common usage examples for their type of API. They also determine the most important use cases among them based on how big a problem they solve on the end product for the end user. And then they'll shortlist the more high value API feature uses for developers. All this is to create a developer first tone throughout the documentation and to make it sound like the documentation was created to help them specifically. And the most significant part of the API document is of course, the list of functions. And API technical writers have three responsibilities here. And the first one is they have to list the functions according to the value for the end user. And the second one is they have to create structured lists that explain functions in order, usually from the most to least prominent. And number three, they have to highlight the more prominent functions to retain developer focus in the product. And if we look at the purpose of the documentation is to introduce developers to your product. User tutorials serve as an extension to that introduction. And most API documents come with a comprehensive user tutorial that often has a step-by-step -step instruction on how to optimally use or implement the API. To create a valuable user tutorial, writers will analyze user competencies to determine how easily developers will understand API features based on their own programming and design knowledge. And then they'll optimize the developer experience, or in other words, DX, by showing developers API features and functions in a way that doesn't overload devs with information that's of little value to them. They'll create comprehensive modules for each set of features, effectively breaking the tutorial up in more digestible chunks and improving the developer experience. And lastly, they'll include a lot of visual aids such as flowcharts, interactive graphics, and other images that help developers understand what the APIs are all about. 
Now, it really depends on the API and the simplicity of it or the complexity of it in terms of the amount of graphics that you'll need to use. And we've talked about the parts of the documentation that involves explaining what an API does. However, there's also the matter of directly convincing users that it's effective at what it does. This is where usage arguments come in. An important aspect of making a usage argument in favor of an API is to get direct feedback from the users who have studied the documentation thus far or have sat through a tutorial presentation about its usage. This again falls to the writer to do. API technical writers will actively encourage developer feedback on any of the API's features. They could do it after each module of the documentation or towards the end. And for this, they have to include feedback sections where developers can provide their thoughts and questions. And most writers will insert many surveys for the same purpose in or towards the end of the document. And all of this is just to get an idea of what the developers actually think of the API. They can use that information to then make a positive argument for the API and support their arguments with data such as usage metrics of specific features, developer opinions about competing APIs, and much more. And now that we've discussed the API technical writing process, let's go ahead and look into what actually goes into an API technical document. And although there are APIs of different sizes and scopes that will have documents with more or less content, every such document will have five sections. These are a quick start guide, which is a shortened version or a summary of the entire document. Also, some authentication info that explains how the API will certify user identity when you access the API's functions, as well as a definition of all the endpoints and an explanation of what each endpoint does, as well as some code snippet examples and example responses in several languages and formats in order to help users expect responses. Now let's go ahead and look at each module separately in order to learn what each entails. A quick start guide is meant to familiarize the users with the API from the get-go. It makes it easier for them to understand how the API works in practice and what level of functionality the finished product will have. Most written guides have a brief overview of the API and its purpose, as well as a description of its major functions. In the case of interactive guides, the guide will have the API interface with its core functionality to help writers demonstrate how everything works. And if the interface is under development, the document will contain some sample app interfaces to give an idea of what the new API will be able to do. And the authentication information explains how the API identifies who is trying to access its functions. Depending on the app's complexity, the API could have several authentication mechanisms in place to ensure secure access. The writer will define each of the mechanisms and explain why the API prefers that system. They'll also explain how complex the authentication framework is and how many layers of authentication are built into the API. Of course, all this information will be in a structured layout to avoid making the section overly complex. Here's an example of an API authentication from Stripe API, which is an online payment service. Each API document set will have a dedicated authentication section that looks similar to this and explains how the API authenticates access requests. Despite their name, endpoints actually define the points where a user starts to interact with the application. They're extremely important to the document because they explain how any user will begin to interact with the API. And writers will start by identifying all the endpoints present in both the quick start interface and the final product, all while talking about how they relate to other endpoints. And this includes both the primary ones and any sister endpoints that they have. And of course, they'll explain the functions of each endpoint, going over whether the functions are open or user restricted, among other specifics. They'll also define any limitations that each endpoint has. Code snippets are necessary to include in documentation because most of the time, developers understand API functionality better through code instead of verbal or written mediums. In considering that, writers have to include code samples to explain how each sample relates various endpoints and tasks. As mentioned earlier, this is to explain how each endpoint interacts with the other. Writers have to discuss the responses that each snippet of code will invoke and how making specific tweaks to the code will result in changes to the functions. Snippets have to be included with the description of every function and endpoint. This is just so devs can understand and use them more effectively. Here's an example of code snippets included in a complete API documentation. And again, I got this from a resource that shows a sample of an API designed for a weather app. 
and this shows code snippets in both PHP and Ruby programming languages. Typically, there will be multiple snippets like these in a set of API documents. This is to accommodate developers who may be using different languages to program components. And each endpoint request has an expected response that's part of the API documentation. Writers have to pair responses with their corresponding endpoint in order to explain how the API will respond to user input. And they have to use language specific pairings to ensure that a function that has been programmed in a specific language also has a response that's explained in that language as well. And last year, they have to define responses according to the request, whether that's a general request, so that means that invokes a general response or a specific request that elicits a request-based response. And there you have it. We just went over what an API technical writer does, their typical responsibilities on the job, and a number of API examples and types of API documentation. And thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and like the video, subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with everything technical writing. And again, my name is Josh. I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ, and I wish you the best of success in your technical writing career. If you're looking to learn more about API technical writing, we do teach it in our certification courses on Technical Writer HQ. So go ahead and check it out if you're really looking to level up your game there. And again, I'll see you on some of our following videos where you'll learn even more about technical writing. Cheers.